This is a video for the basic XRD experiment, which is part of the quantum physics course. Uh, so in this experiment, you're going to diffract X-rays through a crystal uh, and measure the intensity of those diffracted X-rays as a function of the angle of the detector. And what this will allow you to do is work out the interatomic spacing of the atoms in that crystal that you're diffracting the X-rays through. Um, so first, I'm just going to give you an overview of the equipment in this experiment. Uh, so you can see this is the X-ray diffraction uh, main setup here. So it consists of a X-ray source at the back here. Uh, the crystal is mounted in the middle, and then you have an X-ray detector that is on this movable arm. So you can see I can change the angle of the detector here. Um, we've also got some other things connected. So there's a multimeter over here that is just used to show you the voltage that's being applied to the X-ray tube so that you can see whether it's working properly. Uh, and finally, we have a count machine over here. And what this is doing is this is counting the X-rays that are received uh, by the X-ray detector. And so this allows you to work out the intensity of the X-rays at that specific angle. Uh, so next, I'm just gonna show you a little bit more in detail all of the equipment and how it works. Okay, so first we're going to start with the emitter and the actual crystal that's doing the diffraction. So you can see the X-ray emitter is this vacuum tube at the back here, uh, and it has a small slot through which the X-rays are emitted. Um, the X-rays then hit the crystal, which is held in this little holder in the middle here, uh, and then the X-rays are diffracted through that crystal, and they are picked up by a detector which has its own detector slit here. Um, so I can move the position of this detector uh, and I'll show you in a minute how we measure the angle of the detector. Uh, and so in the experiment you're going to do, or the data shows you a bunch of, um, a bunch of measurements for two degree angle increments to start with. So you start with quite a wide uh, coarse spread. Uh, and then once you have a rough idea of where the diffraction peaks are, so the peaks in intensity, you then go back and do finer measurements around those angles to determine the exact location of the peaks. Okay, so here we're looking at the position of the detector. So you can see uh, there are markings here which show the angle two theta, uh, which is the position of the detector. And as I move the detector, hopefully you can see through here, there is a small line which allows you to note the position of the detector exactly. Uh, I'm doing all of this with the lid open so you can see it, uh, but when you do the experiment, you're actually going to do these measurements with the lid closed just so you don't irradiate yourself with the x-rays. Um, so I will show you that now. Okay, so I have now turned the key down here, which turns the power on um, and also set a timer. So it has an auto off timer here, just in case you forget to turn the x-rays off. Um, but if I try and turn the x-rays on now, it won't let me because the lid is not closed. So what I need to do is close the lid, make sure the detector is out of the way so you don't trap the detector. Uh, and then it locks into place in the middle. So you can push it too far the other way and then it won't be locked. So you need to make sure it's clicked into the middle. And then there is a start button here. And if I press this, you can see the red light is turned on at the back and the tube is now lit up, which means we're emitting x-rays. And also you can see a voltage on the multimeter over here. So it's showing four volts. Um, so now what the experiment is, is to set this detector every two degrees. So at the moment I've set it to 30 degrees for two theta. Um, and then what we're going to do is count the number of X-rays I receive at that position. And so the way to do that, so this power is turned on and it stops. There's a reset button here. So this sets it to zero. And then if I press the count button, what you'll now see is it will start counting X-rays. Um, and so it's set up to count for one minute. So you do a one minute count at each position and then use this to construct your, um, your interference pattern. 